hide it. Assuming that by now, you already have a basic understanding which solar variables can be mapped from imaging spectroscopy data and how to acquire reference data on the ground, we will have a closer look on the relationship between in situ and remotely sensed data in this lesson. How on earth do you link your in situ data with spectral information, or even retrieve information of the side soil properties from space without ground truth? Well, there are actually quite a few methods, and they differ depending on the application at hand. In this video, I want to present a very short overview of methods to extract information on soil properties for hyperspectral data. No matter if working with point spectrum or the spectra of image pixels, the goal of information extraction for soil applications is usually to map the composition and or abundance of a given soil property. For their full potential, these analyses required existing reference data, either spectra that in this context are also called end members, where an end member is a spectrum of what's considered the pure material, or in situ measurements, for example, of one or several soil geochemical properties. Generally speaking, we differentiate between two approaches, namely classification and quantification. The classification approach provides the spatial distribution of each thematic category or end member. However, the output is qualitative, meaning that we assign the label to each pixel with no information on quantitative abundances. In contrast to the classification approaches, quantification approaches offer information on the abundance of each specific soil property or each end member. Now, don't get confused. The outcomes of the two approaches differ, but the methods to get to these outcomes are often very similar. Classification approaches most common in a hyperspectral soil context are, among others, machine learning methods such as random forest or support vector machines, for example, to predict soil types, soil texture, or soil deprivation stages. From a hyperspectral soil perspective, more common than classification approaches are actually quantification approaches. Therefore, in this course, we want to focus on quantification approaches useful for soil compositional mapping. State-of-the-art methods for the quantitative retrieval of soil properties are spectral feature analyses, such as provided by the NSOMAP toolset in the NMAP box. It allows to detect fractional cover of green versus dry vegetation versus soil moisture versus dry soils, and allows the map compositional soil properties. Statistical multivariate machine learning approaches allowing to map compositional soil properties. Spectral mixing analyses, also known as linear spectral unmixing, used among other methods to detect fractional coverage of green versus dry vegetation versus soils. Radiative transfer modeling approaches, RTMs for short, that you might be familiar with from our agricultural MOOC, are still a topic of ongoing research for soils. No general RTM is currently available for modeling of soil molecules and their complex mixtures. Only for singular components, some RTMs currently exist. For example, the MARIT model allows for a given soil to model spectra with the variable amounts of soil moisture. Okay, let's look at the quantification methods in a little more detail. The spectral mixture analysis, or linear spectral unmixing approach, assists in the quantification of, for example, soil and vegetation, or soil versus stone abundance in a pixel, to derive the percent cover of each end member in a mixed pixel. Besides providing essential fractional cover information, these analyses can serve as soil-specific pre-processing for subsequent methods that should only be applied to pixels that are dominantly bare or uncovered soils. Spectral mixture analyses require an extensive or carefully selected set of end members or spectral libraries and are, thanks to their long and extensive application, very robust. However, due to the extensive number of end members needed and issues related to dynamic surface conditions, such as soil moisture, their general use in soil property mapping research is limited. With respect to spectral feature analyses, Different approaches are used. These can be computationally rather simple, 
for example, narrow spectral indices, slopes, and absorption band depths, or complex, like the modeling of absorption bands, for example, Gaussian model. Both approaches allow for the semi-quantification of soil geochemical and physical properties, such as soil mineralogical composition or soil moisture, without the need for any calibration data. For absolute quantification, however, these methods require in situ information. The spectral feature analysis is often quite robust and easy to apply. You can try yourself in the upcoming lesson of this course. Most commonly used in soil spectroscopy are statistical multivariate machine learning approaches, also referred to as chemometrics. They include multivariate statistical analyses, such as partial least squares regression, PLSR for short, as well as machine learning algorithms, such as random forest, artificial neural networks, and support vector machines. Chemometrics methods require in situ information and allow for the retrieval of soil type, soil minerals, and soil bio and geophysical properties. To reduce the risk of overfitting the machine learning model, the database should ideally be split into a set of training and independent test data for evaluation. While some approaches are very established and robust, others may benefit from further development, also with respect to user friendliness. Whichever method you choose, it might be well advisable to apply some pre-processing. No, sorry, I don't mean pre-processing in terms of geo or atmospheric image correction. We assume that the data are already perfectly prepared for the actual analyses. In the context of soil analyses, carefully inspect your spectra for spikes that the algorithms may misinterpret as features. From the lab over the field up to spaceborne acquisitions, the data are more and more likely to require some smoothing before any algorithm can deliver reliable results. You might even remove entire bands, for example, in the spectral atmospheric water absorption ranges. Then, popular and readily available smoothing algorithms are, for example, the savitsky golai filters. Other commonly used data pre-preparation algorithms are normalizations, such as, for example, the continuum removal or data transformations such as working with derivatives or absorbents. Also worth mentioning are pre-processing techniques that reduce the variable space by removing redundancy from the large number of highly correlated hyperspectral bands. For example, the minimum noise fraction transformation or principal component analysis. Often, a compressed but highly information-rich variable space performs actually better and certainly faster. Last but not least, keep in mind that hyperspectral instruments do only observe the very top of the surface. If the soil you want to study is covered by whatever, your analyses are likely to fail. Most soil retrieval algorithms require the provision of bare and dry soil dominated spectra, so mask any others with the algorithm of your choice. Please do not forget to consider the impact of variable soil moisture or soil surface roughness conditions along with the presence of dry residues, plants, or stones in your interpretation. Now, enough of methodological categories and pre-processing preparations. How do these algorithms actually work? Take a short break, digest all the information, and I'll explain in the next video.